The video got cut off there, um, so we're just going to quickly go over a review. Uh, I did just miss the laugh out last half of the Dodger game, so let's finish off here, uh, and I will quickly go over where I was with the um, with the Diamondbacks and uh, L.A. here. So White Sox, Baltimore, um, Schultons, I think is in play at 5,200. Dean Kramer, not so much for me. Baltimore's in play once again. Not my favorite, though. I'm probably going to come off of them and just play some other offenses. I think the White Sox, you could find a stack here as a super contrarian play going after Dean Kramer. Uh, but don't be surprised if Kramer pops a little bit at 7,700 against a bad team. The White Sox are a bad team. Bad at ball ways, they match up okay with him, though. Um, Washington and Toronto. No McKenzie Gore for me. I want to play some Toronto, and I got a good bit of exposure to them in my first build here today. Same with Josie Barrios. I got a little bit of him as well. I'm going to stay off of Washington tonight, um, including you know uh, the C.J. Abrams or whatever. I do kind of like a Cabert Ruiz. That's okay, but uh, mostly just Toronto here for me tonight. Um, I do like stacks, and, and I kind of want to go after McKenzie Gore. He's given up way too many barrels. Texas and the Mets. I'm off of Texas here a little bit tonight, um, even though I'm rarely off of them. Having a token couple of uh, Texas stacks is, is warranted literally every day. I want to play some Josie Quintana, I think, at 6,300. He's going to make a lot of stuff happen for you, and nobody's going to go after him or after Texas with him. So... Uh, I think that makes you contrarian if you need to get it, and it makes you cheap, and it gets you the same similar uh, types of constructions with very expensive Atlanta stacks if you get down there. Um, but if you want to play some Texas, bad at ball-wise, they're going to match up okay because he's still not throwing it past anybody. Um, but I think there's more relative upside for him at 6,300 than there is for the entire Texas lineup. Um, getting Quintana. I still really respect the arm. Houston and Boston, super expensive. Houston tonight still uh, getting Brian Bale. Probably less on them tonight than I was last night, and I wasn't really on them last night, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't want to play Brian Bale or J.P. France, though, necessarily. I don't want to play lefties against J.P. France. I'd rather play right-handers, so I'm kind of off of Boston a little bit. Houston is the favorite in the game, but I'm not super thrilled about going after Brian Bale because he induces so many ground balls. Left-handers would be the favorite or maybe a, a pure fly ball hitter like an Alex Bregman from the right side uh, against Brian Bayo, but that's pretty much it. Give me right-handers against J.P. France, Justin Turner, uh, Adam Duvall, and maybe a, um, a Sedan Rafaela down at the bottom as a cheap $2,000 outfielder. Cleveland and Minnesota, uh, Gavin Williams, I think, is in play against the Twins. He's pretty strong. You want to go after him with lefties. So if you want to play some left-handed Twins pieces, I think they're viable once again. Probably in short stacks for me tonight, um, as opposed to last night. When you could have convinced me that full stacks were very viable. Uh, I want to play Pablo Lopez, though, definitely at sub-10% ownership against Cleveland. I think this is a very winnable spot for him. And... Um, you know, he's the second highest projected pitcher. He's the most expensive, and he's still popping north in 30 value score here. So I've got no problems playing him against Cleveland tonight, even though I generally don't like going after him. Uh, Cleveland, that is. Uh, it's okay. And 10-8, I think, is kind of a stiff price tag for today's constructions, but I've got no problems doing it fundamentally. I really love Pablo. Same thing with Gavin Williams, though. 8,600, I believe he is. Um, probably a little pricey, but uh, i got no problems playing him. He's still a really efficient um, you know, play discipline type of arm. San Diego and, and St. Louis. San Diego, yeah, sure, but like I'm not happy about playing him again. Zach Thompson, uh, no thank you, absolutely not. Seth Lugo, maybe, if you land on a couple of teams. I got, you know, a couple uh, percentage points, I suppose, of Seth Lugo here. Um, 7900 though, I really don't like the price tag. I'd rather pivot it to, like, Gavin Williams uh, or somebody cheaper um, maybe like an Andrew Heaney or something, if I land on something like that. But that's going to make it contrarian, so if you get to, you know, whatever and need that, um, eh, he's in play because we have seen um, we have seen the Cardinals go exceptionally cold in their last three games. Seth Lugo is not Blake Snell. He is not Zach Wheeler. He is not Aaron Nola, however. So keep that in mind if you want to play some Cardinals. Notably, it'd just be like a Nolan Gorman, I think. All of the Padres, though, because they're excellent against lefties, and Zach Thompson has problems against righties. Milwaukee and the Cubs, no offense here for me, mostly. Very little offense, actually almost zero uh, from Milwaukee. Very little from the Cubs. Um, just right-handers against Corbin Burns. I, I don't want a single lefty. So that's why I like Corbin Burns a lot. And same thing with Justin Steele, because Milwaukee's probably going to platoon, and they really shouldn't. They should throw lefties in the lineup, because that's how Steele is a tackle. It's not with right-handers. Um, so both of these guys very much in play. Ownership-wise, I got no problems getting to that much with either of them. Uh, I'll probably come in 
you know, elsewhere. But, you know, that's how uh, we just got to kind of build our team sometimes. Pittsburgh and Kansas City, no Luis Ortiz whatsoever. A lot of Cole Reagan. Give me all the Cole Reagans. I mean, and I want to play a lot of Kansas City, too, against Luis Ortiz. Very high upside spot for the Royals here tonight. Um, and very little Pittsburgh. Uh, I'll have some hedge pieces, definitely, with, like, uh, you know, my token Connor Joe against the lefty. Um, Brian Hayes, maybe a Kutch or something like that. I'm not wild about Brian Reynolds from the right side, necessarily. He got a day off. He's been poor recently, so hopefully that clears his head a little bit. He's fine in little leverage stacks if you get there. Atlanta and Colorado, um, no Peter Lambert. Yeah, probably not as much Atlanta exposure tonight as I got uh, last night, but, you know, I'm still going to have a healthy amount. Let's not get it confused. Um, maybe a little Charlie Morton as well. 8,500, it's not horrific. I'd rather just play uh, Gavin Williams, of course, or um, who was the other guy? Josie Barrios. But Charlie Morton is in play. I'm really, really worried about this curveball here, but I'm not so worried that the changeup and the slider value have uh, kind of skyrocketed in the, in the last two months for Charlie Morton. So still has some stuff that can keep him in play, not a hell of a lot. Oakland and Seattle, um, Waldachuk and George Kirby. No Waldachuk for me tonight. Totally different construction dynamic compared to yesterday. And a good bit of George Kirby. You know, I got whatever, 20%, not the 30 that the field got so far or is projected to get. Um, but no problem with playing Kirby at all. This is a super high upside matchup for him, absolutely. Offense, Seattle definitely, but probably shorter stacks for me here today uh, against Oakland. And I still like the guys at the top of the lineup, uh, pretty much all of them. Cincy and San Francisco, uh, very little offense here for me. It would be San Francisco. Uh, if anybody, I don't want any Cincinnati. I'm just gonna, not going to deal with it here tonight. Um, some Brandon Williamson and a good bit of Alex Cobb, too, for sure. And here's the Arizona and the Dodger game. I can't do it here with Mel Merrill Kelly here tonight uh, against the Dodgers. We talked about it last night with uh, Zach Gallant. It's just the hard contact for Merrill Kelly, and it's really to both sides of the plate. He doesn't do some ground balls, but unfortunately for him, the Dodgers mostly hit fly balls, right? At least the guys you're scared of. So if you can get to some Dodger stacks, I think they're way off the board. And very viable. Even though I really respect Merrill Kelly, I love playing him at low ownership. I don't want to do it here tonight. Kershaw, I'm actually going to come off of this. Uh, I'm worried about depth with Kershaw. Not because he went two innings in his last start against Cleveland. That game got rained out. It's mostly because this is August, September, Dave Roberts season. I've mentioned this several times. I have questions for everybody on, on the Dodgers pitching staff uh, from, a starting, from a starter's perspective. At 10-2, I'd much rather play Burns. I'd much rather play Pablo Lopez. I think the strikeout upside is higher for both of those guys in their respective match. Maybe not for Pablo against Cleveland. Um, but, you know, neither Cleveland nor Arizona strike out at an exceptionally high clip here. So it's not like Arizona is a rollover easy matchup. I love Kershaw, and having a little bit of exposure is probably warranted. Um, but I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it off. Most of my exposure is just going to go to other guys uh, because I'm worried about depth. You need him to be incredibly efficient against Arizona, and they're still a sticky team that doesn't strike out a lot. So, um, you know, I have no real problems with Kershaw. He does give up a little bit of pop to right-handers, but he still has whiffs, still has ground balls. The, the control is still impeccable, etc., etc. It's no problems fundamentally. Uh, it's just a construction and a, an options um, problem with Kershaw for me here tonight. I don't think he's going to be able to go seven innings. And when you pay above 10000 for a guy, you need a full seven. So that's where I am with Kershaw. Um, probably very little Arizona. Maybe a Gabby Marino. He's been fantastic recently. Uh, outside of that, I don't really want to deal with any of these guys. Um, Gabby is 2600 uh, You want to play a pure fly ball right-hander? Maybe like an Evan Longoria, 3200 I think that's okay, too. If you get to a short stack of of the Diamondbacks I don't think that's miserable um, but you're still going after Clayton Kershaw here you know so keep that in mind it is a 12 game slate so sorry about these split videos um, maybe I spliced them maybe I didn't in any case um, that's where we are on today's 12 gamer good luck to everybody keep an eye out for projections and ownership updates as always as we'll be throwing them in throughout the day